The isekai genre is overused and extremely oversaturated. Yeah, I know what a nothing burger statement to say, but... The entire genre as a whole has been boiled down to common and generic tropes you can see almost everywhere. The main character gets transported to another world through whatever means like death or transportation. Because the genres are pushed out almost every season, the characters are usually generic and not memorable or is built up to have some sort of development or self-realization that is pretty cookie cutter. After discovering and researching the systems of the world, realize that they're super strong, average, or super weak. The side characters are usually not any better, either being plot devices for the main character to triumph over a certain adversary, comic relief, or is secretly stronger than the main character but is for some reason still following them. And a lot of the shows in this genre try to be unique by adding a cool gimmick, but end up doing the exact opposite because of it. It honestly gets so bad that I forget half the shit they go through because it just feels like I'm watching the same thing over and over again. And this might be more of a personal preference, but the animation style tends to be really bright, generic, and bubbly, with none of them having any personality. What I'm trying to say is that the common structure of this genre is pretty bare bone and thrown up on you without giving you really any time to understand it. So when I magically saw an isekai about DC characters, I honestly didn't think too much of it, still having this preconception that it would probably be terrible. And because of that, I promptly put it in the back burner. And then I watched the first couple of episodes. Though I believe the more popular term for it these days is an isekai. While it was slow at the beginning, I'm so glad I stuck around because honestly, this show has given me the most fun I've had with this genre in a while. And I will admit that it doesn't address most of the concerns I addressed at the beginning of the video. But the more I watched, the more I realized it thrives on this aspect. The idea of being average and generic, but still being entertaining. Honestly, I think that's where its strength lies, in its self-acknowledgement of what kind of show it is, generic and entertaining, from its characters to the overall plot of the show. Sometimes being average is okay, and this show is a great example of that. It doesn't do anything great, but it also doesn't do anything bad. But for what the show is, I still think it's pretty entertaining. What I was expecting was something in between Justice League and, I don't know, a world with my smartphone? I haven't watched a lot of isekais, okay? I was expecting a lot of unnecessary world building for very low payoff and unbearable characters. But what I got was a mix of Lord of the Rings and Konosuba. I know that's a weird combination, but just give me a second. Let's first start off with the characters. Earlier, I mentioned the characters in this genre usually feel rushed either because of a fast production time or because the characters in general are overall bland. And Konosuba solves this issue in an interesting way. We have the smart but average at everything else Kazuma, the masochist Arknight that can't hit anything darkness, the literal epitome of a dustmite Aqua, and the Chunibyu mage Megumi. And while the show does slightly explore into the psyche of these characters, specifically in the movie and season 3, at their core they're still exactly the same characters that we've known since day 1, and for the most part they don't really try to be any more than that. I'm sure that changes in the light novel, but I haven't gotten to that stage yet. I am in the manhwa reading pipeline, which will eventually get me to the light novel reading pipeline, but I'm getting sidetracked here. In short, Konosuba has a tendency of not developing their characters, but gives them the opportunity to build on this aspect to provide us more comical scenes with their anchored personalities. Suicide Squad tends to follow this path, but they have a little bit of an advantage up their sleeve. While Konosuba has the same consistent characters, Suicide Squad has that, but we're given all the exposition and backstory beforehand in the form of the hundreds of animated shows, comics, and movies. We know exactly what their powers are, their backstories, their drives, and how violent they would react to certain scenarios. It's basically the equivalent of Avengers Endgame. Given all the movies we all watched for the past decade led to a powerful payoff knowing all the backstories and hardships that each of these characters had to go through. But in terms of Suicide Squad, it's more the fact that we don't need too much time to understand these characters. Because again, we should already know all of these characters at the very least surface level. And for the people that don't, the characters are still really easy to understand. And because there's no need to go deeper into the DC cast, the show is able to focus on the non-DC characters, like the princess with her own struggle to have her own autonomy and not worrying about the opinions and thoughts of others. But enough with the characters, let's move on to the plot, which is in my opinion the part of the show people criticize the most. What I love about Lord of the Rings is that it was simply a classical magical world, complete with a really fun, entertaining, and easy to understand hero's journey. The main characters have a magical item and they have to transport it from point A to point B to destroy it. And while there's plenty of lore that can be seen outside the movie, like in the books or in some sort of other canon content, what the movies provided us is an interesting yet simple magical tale, not trying to be anything else. 
There was no over-excessive fight for political power. There was no need to go into minute detail about the magical system. It was simply a fight against good and evil. And honestly, that's exactly what I see and feel when I watch Suicide Squad. There's no magical system that's actively being pushed into our face. And while there is a little bit of tension between the nations, it isn't enough to be overbearing. Overall, it is a simple, magical tale. And when boiled down, the hero's journey is also pretty simple. They get transported to another world, and they try to get back. And while I do admit this does follow the concern of it being an oversaturated cliché seen in most isekai genres, the knowledge of this show having a beginning, middle, and end makes it a lot more tolerable. I know this show isn't going to stretch itself thin. Almost every single episode slowly leads them to the end of their journey. And indirectly, this provides even more structure to the characters. Instead of focusing on the characters we already know, like the Suicide Squad, focuses on characters that we don't know too well. What Konosuba and Lord of the Rings have in common is the fact that they aren't really trying to be any more than what they are, whether it be through their characters or the plot as a whole. But because of how they structured themselves allowed them to be incredibly entertaining and fun to watch either way. And sadly, this is the most refreshing this genre has felt to me. While there are diamonds in the rough, they are still diamonds in the rough. They are pretty rare to come by, especially with how many of these shows with this genre are being pumped out. I also at least wanted to talk about the elephant in the room, okay? The, the animation it is. When I first saw that the show was going to be produced by Wit Studios, I was a mix of interested and concerned for what direction they would go with. Their animation style tends to be very versatile, from Attack on Titan, Spy Family, and even the show that trumps both of these, Shiko Noko 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 Koshi Tan Tan, some of the best cinema we've had of our time. New video out by the way, you should check that out. Anyways, while the animation is a little bit rough around the edges, this animation style is so refreshing. The characters are expressive, the action scenes are good, and overall it feels unique compared to some of the other shows this season. Hi, script writing Lemoyne here, I just got finished with episode 7 and I'll be honest, those fight scenes were so fucking good. <laughs> From Harley Quinn running to even the fight with her and Katana was honestly awesome to watch and definitely quite a treat. Felt like almost no action was wasted and it felt awesome to watch. But anyways, that's all I wanted to say. <laughs> Again, this isn't the best and it seems like they're having a bit of issues with some of the scenes. Like in one episode it'll have a certain style and then it'll do a complete 180 in another episode. And there are some points in the show where the movements of the characters just feel kind of off. But overall, I'd rather have this unorthodox and unique style with rough edges than what we have now. With it usually looking a little bit more shinier and cleaner. The animation kind of reminds me of Chainsaw Man, where in one episode it will have a different style, and in the other episode it will have a different one. I will be completely honest and admit that I have been avoiding the genre for quite a while just for the frustrations I expressed at the beginning of the video. And because of this, I've been a little bit closed off to the genre entirely. But after experiencing this show, I've learned again to be a little bit more open-minded. Shows don't always have to be full of exposition and deep thought. Sometimes what you need is a good time. A show where you can turn off your brain and enjoy the ride. And this is exactly what this show provides. A show filled with pretty generic izekai cliches, but uses that idea as its strength to provide us a generally entertaining series. And I'm aware that this show really isn't anything special. Honestly, this show didn't have to exist in the first place. But for what it is, I think it's great. And I hope with this video, you're also able to have an open mind with the show as well. But anyways guys, that's the end of the video. As per usual, I'll leave some clips with some audio. Enjoy. Or like, if I win the lottery, right? I'm not investing it, okay? I'm not investing it. I'm not saving it. I'm not like, I'm not buying a house. I'm betting all of that on red, okay? I'm betting all of that on red. Heed my words. Oh, I only have four kills. Okay, that's sad. I got raised on Lunchables. Now I have 5,000 hours in SAR. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, the Lunchable to SAR pipeline. A, a tragic tale indeed. A tragic yet common tale of the SAR community. Nice. Watch this, watch this. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Yeah! 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 Come here! Yeah! <laughs> Victory! Let's go. Oh my god, wait, an immediate fight is kind of crazy. I heard him, I heard him, I heard him. I use my ears. I'm the smartest SAR streamer in the entire world. My brain is so wrinkly, you can consider it a fucking raisin. Oh my god, wait. You ain't getting a scent from me?
You ain't getting a cent for me. Famous last words, motherfucker. Famous last words. Famous last words right there. Dive into a mine. I thought the thing went... No, imagine he died into the fucking hole. Wait, this hole right here? That'd have been... Oh my... <laughs> <laughs> you lost all your... Oh. <laughs>